Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. Today I want to show you how to completely customize your Windows 11 taskbar experience. I'm going to show you some taskbar settings like pinning and unpinning apps, controlling taskbar behavior, and how to set up your taskbar for multiple monitors. So let's get started. All right, well, let's get into a brief overview of the taskbar. So if you're familiar with Windows 10, you know you've had the taskbars been here for a long, long time, way back to uh, Windows XP, Windows 7. There's always been some kind of taskbar, which is kind of like our control center. Um, it's where we're going to see the apps that we have open. It's, it's going to show us where our pinned apps are. And we're going to talk about some of that in this uh, in this video. So let's start from the, the over here on the, the left hand side and let's work our way to the right. This here is our our informational menu. Um, so when we highlight over this, this is going to be set to your region. If you set up Windows uh, 11 for the first time or if you upgraded, it's going to find your location based on uh, your settings, based on your technically based on your IP address, if you allow it. Uh, and it's going to give me the uh, temperature. It's going to give me my weather forecast. It's going to give me the current updates for whatever's going on in my world and um, any kind of travel things. And these are called widgets. And we, we're not going to talk about that in this video, but we will get into that in a uh, another video down the line. Uh, coming over here, we have the infamous start Windows start menu. Uh, we will talk about that in this video as well. When I click on that, uh, all the apps that I have pinned here show up as well as a button for all the alphabetized apps that come with the device or things that I could actually install. Some of these, I will be honest, are what we would call bloatware, um, items that just come standard, that take up memory, that take up resources that we will probably never use and probably could be removed. Again, up, that's going to be in an upcoming video. All right, we have our search bar. Here I can do searches for anything uh, on the computer itself. Um, I could look for something in, uh, in the actual hard drives or somewhere on the storage system or actually out on the internet. All right, continuing to the right here. This is a preloaded version, a preview of Copilot. Uh, Microsoft has released Copilot as their embedded AI, uh, artificial intelligence for uh, the operating system. This button right here is if you wanted to add additional desktops. Well, you think to yourself, well, wait a minute, I only have one desktop. Uh, you can set up more than one virtual desktop. And we will talk about that in an upcoming video. Next to that are Teams. Microsoft Teams is your communication platform of choice for the Microsoft Office 365 series. Um, a lot of businesses use this as well as home users who want to connect with family and friends uh, across states, across the street, or across the world. Here you can see some apps I have open. You can notice that it'll highlight it and I can show it will show me it's open because it's got this little bubble underneath it. And it tells me kind of a preview of what's going on in that window. Over this side here, we have our little corner icons. We have the hidden or the extended icons we'll look at later. And we have the icons that are available to us. You see here we have OneDrive. I have my microphone settings. I have my network internet access, my speakers. And over here is my date, time, and communication settings that we discussed in a previous video that we put out a couple weeks ago. All right, so that is a brief overview of the taskbar. Uh, a little bit of terminology before we get into the nuts and bolts of customizing the Windows 11 taskbar. So let's talk about pinning and unpinning applications. So the nice thing about the taskbar is that it's gonna keep a history of the apps you have open, as well as the ones that are kind of your favorites. So you can see I have YouTube down here, uh, Microsoft Office, Amazon. So how do they get to there to begin with? 
So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to search uh, for an app that I want to use frequently. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick the paint app. So I'm going to highlight over top of that. I'm not going to click it just yet, but I am going to right click on it. So with not my left mouse button, but my right mouse button brings up a contextual menu, which tells me some things I can do with that specific menu choice. One of them is pin to the taskbar. So I'm going to click that one with my left mouse button. And now I have the paint icon pinned to my taskbar. That will always be there until I unpin it. So what I can do here is I can now click on that without having to delve into the actual menu to look for it. And I can close it. If I want to unpin it, I simply reverse the process. I right click and unpin from taskbar. All right, let's talk about the special default icons. Previously on the introduction, I talked about these five icons right here. Well, not so much an icon with search, uh, kind of an entry, little entry bar here, uh, but these are default icons. Now you can manage these. You can turn these off and on. These do not have to be here if you don't like them. Uh, what I can do is I can simply right click on the taskbar anywhere here, go into my taskbar settings, and I can turn on and off Copilot. You can notice that's gone now. The task view, which is now gone. And I can turn off the widgets menu, which is kind of on the other side here. I should have named that properly earlier. That is the widgets menu. We're going to keep that on. We might use that later. Another thing you can do is with the start menu, it's got a hidden feature to this. So I can right click on the start menu and it's going to bring up a list of tasks or um, applications that are more of a system level or more of the um, customization of Windows. For example, mobility center, power options, event viewer, computer management, um, file Explorer is probably one that we'll use a lot. So it brings up the file Explorer menu. I can right click on that again. I can also go into my shutdown or sign out depending on which I choose to do. Let's go ahead and move over to the right hand side of the screen to the corner icons. So I'm going to again, right click on my taskbar go into my taskbar settings and we're going to talk about managing those little icons in the corner. So you can notice here, I have my OneDrive, my microphone, uh, networking lets me know that I'm connected speaker and so forth. Uh, the overflow is right here. So it says show the hidden icon. So these are the icons that are not currently displayed. They're kind of hidden. If I click on that, I have my USB uh, hardware eject, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Bluetooth and Defender devices here or applications. All right. What I can do is I can go to my system tray icons. And I can turn these on and off if I want to. So for example, I could say that I don't want to see the OneDrive icon. I could turn that off. And now it shows up in my overflow. Let's say I wanted to show my Bluetooth. I could turn Bluetooth on. And now it shows in the front facing part of the, of the tray. So I have a bunch of different options here. Printer devices, Google Chrome, like we said before. Microsoft Edge, I can turn that on. I could turn all these on if I like, just fill this thing up, or I could keep it very limited to only the ones that I use and use the overflow tray as needed. So next we're gonna talk about taskbar behavior. So I can change the appearance and the icons, but I can also change the way the taskbar behaves. So I'm going to click on the taskbar settings again. 
And from here, I'm going to go to Taskbar Behaviors, scroll down, and here's where I can change the alignment of the taskbar. So if you want more of a Windows 10 appearance, you can click the left selection, and you can see that everything now is as it used to be in Windows 10. Or if you prefer the new Windows 11 style, you can keep that centered, and everything remains as it was. I can also turn on or off the badges. So the badges basically, I, and I don't have any to show you here, but for example, if I had unread emails in Microsoft Outlook, it would give me a number or show a little bubble there. Um, I can turn that on or off. So I don't see how many unread emails uh, that I have or how many missed notifications I had in YouTube or other um, social media applications. I can also automatically hide the taskbar. So if I click that button, you can notice that it disappears until I scroll my mouse all the way to the bottom and then it pops back up again. So if your desktop computer is configured with multiple monitors, you can manage your taskbar across more than one monitor. So I'm going to go down to my taskbar settings again. And I'm going to scroll down to taskbar behaviors. And there's a selection here. It says when using multiple displays, show my taskbar apps on all taskbars, which means currently everything you see here is duplicated on a second monitor which means the open and non-open windows and apps. If I was to select this and change it to main taskbar and taskbar where window is open, what happens now is everything here stays as it is since this is my main window. But on the computer monitor where I have other applications running, only those applications are showing up on the taskbar. So you don't see all this. I can change this again and say taskbar where window is open. Now again, the window, it's talking about the, the app or the um, program that's currently running. And if you notice, one of those dropped off, which was Microsoft, Win uh, Microsoft Word. So the fact that Word is running on a separate monitor, that icon or that task is now showing up in the taskbar of the second monitor where the Microsoft Word application is currently running. Another one of my favorite settings is the show desktop icon button. So I've got a lot going on here, and if you're like me, it's hard to navigate getting behind all my other icons and folders. So we're going to right click, go to the taskbar settings, and we're going to scroll down again to taskbar behaviors. And there is a selection here for select the far corner of the taskbar to show the desktop. So when we click that button, it's going to be hard to notice, but on the far right hand side, if you keep moving your mouse over, you'll see a little pop up menu that says show desktop and a little, little line right there. I click that line and I am back to my desktop. Everything's available to me. If I go back here again and click it again. I get all my windows back the way they were. Our last setting is changing the accents and colors of the taskbar. So for this, we're going to go to taskbar settings, but then we're going to jump back to personalization and then go to colors. Now, in order for this to work, to change the accents on the taskbar, we first have to change the mode to custom and then change our default windows mode to dark that now activates the accent color for the taskbar and start menu so now i can turn this on 
And if you notice, it's changed to the current selected color. Now, if you watch at the bottom, I can change to all different colors here, whatever I decide. So I'm going to keep it as a nice teal. And that's all there is to that. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Hopefully by now, your taskbar looks exactly the way you want it to look. Unfortunately, you can't customize everything about it, but it gives you a lot more power on what your taskbar does look like. So thanks for watching this video. And for more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're alerted when we publish new videos like this. My name's Steve, the host of Your Technology Coach. Thanks for watching.